Hello everyone, and welcome back to the lab. In this video, I will be making 1,3-dibromopropane. This alkyl halide is a colorless liquid, no surprise there, with a surprisingly high density. Compared to other brominated organics, like bromoform or tetrabromomethane, 2 grams per milliliter isn't that high, but it was surprising nonetheless. I've had plans to make 1,3-dibromopropane for a very long time, and in fact, you can see it on my to-do list from over a year ago. I want it for a pretty specific reason, to make cyclopropane. I know that I hardly ever get around to doing what I say, but I did just buy this Dewar condenser, so I am hopeful that I will get that done. Without further ado, let's get on to the preparation. The procedure actually comes from 1921, if you can believe it, straight from the journal Orgsin. The chemists back then were absolute mad lads, and even though I did this on a 10% scale, I still needed a 1 liter flask to do it. I started out with 135 milliliters of water, 154.5 grams of sodium bromide, 45.6 grams of 1,3-propane diol, and 250 grams of concentrated sulfuric acid. First, I added the water to a 1 liter flask along with all of the sodium bromide. Of course, it didn't all dissolve, so I started adding the first half of the sulfuric acid. That quickly turned out to be a bad idea, so I chilled the acid in the water before continuing. After that, I poured in the propane diol and the rest of the sulfuric acid. Then, I set up for reflux and let it go for four and a half hours. Orkson recommended five to six hours, but this was late the night before Thanksgiving, so I cut it short. Picking up the next morning, I distilled the crude product out of the reaction mixture. Here we can see the first good sign of our desired product. The distillate separated into two layers, the lower one being organic. It was still crude though, so I began purification by washing the lower layer with water. This was followed by concentrated sulfuric acid, which gave our second good sign. The product was denser than the acid, not a common feat.
Finally, it was washed with a 10% sodium carbonate solution and dried over calcium chloride for 24 hours. This cleared it up and revealed an interesting effect. Hydrated calcium chloride is less dense and the density of 1,3-dibromopropane is just right that the anhydrous and monohydrate particles sink while the dihydrate and higher float. Because some calcium chloride is sitting on the bottom, we can be sure that this is dry. I filtered off the dense liquid and set up for a final distillation. I opted for a simple distillation because a column would be very slow with the high distillation temperature, and I didn't have an accurate vacuum gauge for vacuum distillation. 1,3-dibromopropane boils at 167 degrees, so I insulated everything well with aluminum foil. I discarded the first few drops, although there didn't appear to be anything low boiling. After that, I collected everything between 166 and 168 degrees, before the stillhead temperature started dropping. Everything was transferred to a tiered 100 milliliter graduated cylinder where I found my yield of 98.27 grams, which is a percent yield of 81.2%. Not bad considering the small scale. I found the density to be 1.965 grams per milliliter, which is very close to the literature value of 1.989 grams per milliliter. This should be pure enough for my purposes, and we can confirm the identity in the next video when I make cyclopropane. This video was made possible by the support of those on Patreon. Their support is what allows me to buy things like this to continue to make videos with. Thank you to everyone that continued to support me even after my months of inactivity. A special thanks goes out to my top patron, Jay, as well as the other incredible supporters, Applied Science, Rodenide, the gayest person on YouTube, Oliver, and Mackie. Finally, thank you Andrew, Aussie Chemist, Cliff's Music Lab, Daniel, Josie, and Mortlet. See you guys in the next one.